one of the more interesting areas of intellectual property and public access is in the pharmaceutical realm. Uh, pharmaceutical companies obviously create a lot of uh, medications and treatments and devices that are um, useful in, in treating a variety of, of important um, conditions. And uh, they often want to protect the investment in creating these things with intellectual property rights. Um, and those, that, that protection often results in higher prices. Um, higher prices work in the developed world. We can pay for them as well as housing and food and things like that. In the developing world, it gets a little more difficult where there isn't a lot of extra money to pay for medications. Um, and even if the prices are reduced, um, if any elevated price can create a major issue of access and, and, and limit the potential of the uh, medication or device um, to treat illnesses. So um, th there's kind of perhaps a, an exacerbation of the tension between intellectual property rights and public access when it comes to medicines in the developed world. So I've looked in my research at uh, some possible ways that we try to relieve some of this tension. And one of the relief valves that's been well known for quite some time, but but but's generated some recent interest is what's called compulsory licensing, where we uh, limit the exclusivity of an intellectual property right, like a patent, um, and uh, permit wider public access uh, for a limited period of time. And my research has looked at the compensation that's necessary for these licenses. How much do you have to pay to use them? And uh, what, what I've proposed is what I think is a more logical way of, of, of um, allowing access while still keeping the incentive. And that's, that's one of the issues in any of these relief valves. You want to make sure that um, pharmaceutical companies still have uh, an incentive interest in, to create these things, uh, to create medicines. I was uh, fortunate enough to receive a Fulbright grant to study the interaction between intellectual property and human rights at the University of Ottawa in Canada. And it, it gives me a great opportunity, I think, to um, see how different countries make that balance a little bit differently than we have here in the United States. So what I'm going to be studying specifically is Canada's compulsory licensing system, um, which is called the Access to Medicines Regime. Um, Canada has a more formalized system where compulsory licensing of pharmaceuticals is actually encouraged and this permits Canada to export uh, low-cost pharmaceuticals to developing nations. Uh, the U.S. has no such system, although one has been discussed in the past. Uh, and so the real difference is the fact that Canada has a particular system in place. Um, it's formal. Um, it has actually uh, experienced its first uh, application for export of uh, compulsory licensed drugs and as I said the United States has no such system. So I want to investigate what kinds of forces led to the development of this kind of system, what kinds of perhaps cultural and legal um, uh, aspects of the two systems led to I guess a divergence in how we deal with the access to medicines issue.